Hello everyone and welcome back to another YouTube video and another end of year YouTube video. In this one, we're going to be ranking all five Marvel Disney Plus shows of 2021. This is going to be a good one. Let's go. Like I said in the intro, we're going to be ranking all five of the Marvel Disney Plus shows from worst all the way to the best one. I'll be giving my thoughts on them all. As always, with these type of videos, this is my ranking, not the perfect ranking, not the correct ranking, not your ranking. If you disagree, that is completely fine. That is the whole point of media is that we all have different takes on things. We all like different things. With that being said, if you do have a different take, leave your take down in the comments. We can have a little discussion about it. But once again, this is my opinion, purely based on what I enjoyed the most in 2021. With all of that boring stuff out of the way, let's not waste any time, let's get straight into the video. Coming in at number five in last place is The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I am not gonna lie, this show for me is the definition of mid. It's not terrible, it's definitely not terrible, but it's not good in my opinion. Bucky was incredibly boring and every time he was on screen, I was just straight up not interested. I just think his character is so stale and I hate to say it, I don't like to bag on characters, but Bucky is just never interested me after the Winter Soldier. Anthony Mackie is Sam Wilson. He's pretty good. I actually do really enjoy him most of the time. Sometimes there's a little bit too much sarcasm, a little bit too much trying to like, push in that comedy to make him that grumpy sarcastic guy for the most part i don't mind it and i do quite like him as a character also his captain america suit i can't lie was very very nice at the end of the show the villain though oh my oh, the villain for the falcon and the winter soldier you probably don't even remember her name it was carly morgenthal no motives like very confusing most of the time horrendous accent that didn't fit in the mcu which i bagged on every week in my reactions she was one-off, if not the worst Marvel villain I've seen in the MCU. Like, she was that bad. Oh my goodness, she was the worst character by far. As far as I'm concerned, the plot was all right. It was pretty dead. It did have some good messages, don't get me wrong. The messages off the show and the real-life implications were very important. I'm not looking over that at all. But the show in general as part of the MCU was just pretty bland and boring. It was just a bunch of frat guys riding about on motorbikes and driving fast cars, punching and kicking each other. Like, We've seen that a thousand times, explosions and punching people and yeah, it's just very, very basic. Nothing really that special. It just felt like a same old, same old kind of very basic, generic action thing. However, good points. Isaiah Bradley was very interesting. I would love to see more of his story, his past, whatever. Honestly, a show on just that alone would have been better than the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, in my opinion. Joaquin Torres, who will obviously become the new Falcon. I absolutely loved him. He was a, like, a standout character for me, even though he was a small part. I enjoyed every time he was on the screen. I wish there was more of him. And John Walker, by far, not my fav... <sighs> Not my favourite, but maybe the best character in the show. The fact that we hated him so much shows how good of a performance he put in. It was one of the things I was actually interested in watching in the show, one of the things that made me look at the screen and keep my interest. However, by far, standout character, my favourite in the whole show, Zemo. Zemo completely stole every single episode, every scene that he was in. Everything that had Zemo in it made me want to watch it. If there was more Zemo, it would be ranked higher. Zemo was so fun and I enjoyed every single thing he had to do with the show. With that being said, the show in general was not very good in my opinion. I would give this a solid 5 out of 10. And honestly, it could be argued that it's less, maybe more in your opinion, but for me, five out of 10. All right, coming in at fourth place, we have What If, the animated show. Now don't get me wrong, some episodes were very boring. There were some parts where I was just like, ah, oh, do we have to watch this? I wasn't exactly excited to watch it every single week. However, near the end, I was getting very into it and I was really enjoying it. There was a lot of great characters. For example, the Killmonger, my Michael B. Jordan, I really loved and I really hope we get him in the MCU more in the future. Captain Carter, the episode wasn't the best, but the character was very interesting. Obviously, Ultron was an absolute unit. One of the coolest animated villains I've seen in a long time. I loved him so much and Dark Doctor Strange, Strange Supreme, whatever you want to call him. 
he was a very interesting character and I loved watching their back and forth at the end. The Marvel Zombies episode, especially for me, if you know me, you'll know I love zombie fiction. The Marvel Zombies episode was amazing. I really enjoyed that whole episode very thoroughly. And I cannot wait for the new show to come out because it's one of my all-time favourite comic runs from Marvel. All in all, Marvel tried something new for the MCU and it was good. It wasn't bad at all. It was pretty cool. The story ended great. Everything came together in a big conclusion very nicely. However, it's lower on the list just simply because I prefer live action. I always have, I always will, I can't help it. It was a good show, it just wasn't better than the other three. I would give this a solid 6.5 out of 10. Okay, hitting the podium, taking the number three spot, we have Loki. Now Loki was a great show. When I watched it the first time, I thought it was very enjoyable. I was excited every single week to watch it. However, I did rewatch it and it wasn't as good. It was still good, just not as good as the first time. I don't think it has as much of a rewatchability factor as the top two spots that I have. Tom Hiddleston, however, one of the best performances he's put in in the MCU. You mix that with Owen Wilson's Mobius character and together they were a great duo. I love seeing them on screen. Mobius was by far my favourite character off the show. Some of the episodes seemed like filler and I wish the show was maybe a nine episode show. The six episodes I feel just didn't do it justice. I love the mystery theme in the whole getting to learn all the story behind the TVA. I thought that was very interesting. And visually, the show looked absolutely amazing. I cannot fault it visually. The CGI at the end, especially when they went through the door to like where all the Lokis were, the whole kind of last couple of episodes were beautiful. I think the story for the most part was pretty good. The ending could have been better. The finale was a little bit lacklustre, I'm not gonna lie. However, I think season two will build on that and season two will be much better than the first season. One last thing, Sylvie. She was all right sometimes. For the most part, I find her just a little bit annoying. I'm not gonna lie. And especially in the last episode, she was just the cause of the problems. I do wish we got all of the other Lokis explored a little bit more. Classic Loki was so enjoyable to watch, so was Kid Loki, and I wish we got to see a little bit more of them. Like I said, nine episodes would have done this show a lot nicer and could have really given each character more time to be invested in. I would give this show a pretty solid 7.5 out of 10, pretty respectable. Now, silver medal spot coming in at number two, and let me tell you, the top two are very, very close, and it was so hard to decide between them. At number two, we have Hawkeye. I loved this show. It was almost perfection. Clint Barton, now one of my favorite MCU characters. I always liked him. This show just elevated that so much. Kate Bishop was one of the most enjoyable phase four characters we've got so far if not the most enjoyable new addition to the MCU. You mix the perfect amount of comedy with the perfect amount of action and good fight scenes and you put it in the middle with a lot of Christmas vibes. That is such a winning formula. I was sold straight away. Even all of the supporting characters, I cannot fault. Jack Duquesne was so enjoyable. I didn't like him at first. By the end, I absolutely loved him and I was sold. Kazi was very interesting and I wish we got to see more of him in the future, but unfortunately not. Even the LARPers were all pretty pretty good. They weren't even that annoying. Normally side characters like that can be kind of jarring. I liked them a lot. Also shout out to Adele Drehos, my friend. She was in the show. That's awesome. A big highlight of the show was getting to see all of Clint Arsenal, the trick arrows, the pim arrow especially, the two that we got to see. They were so fun when every time you shot an arrow you were just wondering what was going to happen next. I loved that so much. The family dynamic of the show was very interesting. How Clint was like a new father figure kind of to Kate and then also he had his family on in the side and he had to get home for Christmas. Then you add in Yelena with the Black Widow stuff with Clint. There were so many emotional connections in the show and it was great. I thought everything was done perfectly. I can't even lie. The mysterious villain plot was all right for the most part. However, Kingpin at the end could have been a bit better. I'm not going to lie. This is why it was almost perfect. The villain just wasn't quite there and I really hate saying that because I love the show so much. But I'm sure you would agree Kingpin could have been used much better. And uh, you know, it would have got a higher ranking, but the post credits was a huge L. I, I never want to have to see that ever again in my whole life. I would give this show a very respectable 9 out of 10, and it would have been better with just a slightly better finale. With that being said, coming in at number one, my favorite Marvel Disney Plus show of the whole year. You knew it was coming. You know I've been a stand since day one. WandaVision. Oh my god. WandaVision was 
oh, I just can't even explain how much I loved it. I fell in love with this show, with the characters, with everything. The vibes of this show were immaculate. The community hype was at an all-time high. The theories were popping off every single week and I loved it so much. I would stay up every single week to watch the new episode at 7 in the morning just because I didn't want to have to go to sleep. I was so excited for it. I would even dress up as Quicksilver sometimes. Man, the YouTube videos for WandaVision were peak. I think Wanda and Vision in general have the best relationship we have ever seen in any comic book media. And, you know, flame me for that in the comments if you want. But I was so invested in their marriage and their life, it was unreal. I really loved the mystery of it. I love mystery things in general. And the fact that the whole time everything was perfect, but there was just an underlying evil that you couldn't pinpoint. Oh my God, I'm just... I love it so much. And then on top of that, you add the sitcom style where there's different sitcoms every week. There was literally hundreds of Easter eggs and callbacks in every single episode, which for me and the kind of person I am where I like to notice the small details was just so overwhelming, but in a good way. There was so much to break down and get into and talk about all week that it literally kept the hype up for the whole week. Agatha Harkness was a very cool villain. I loved her. I didn't have complaints. Some people hated it. I don't know why. I'm excited for her show. I thought she was fantastic. And Catherine Hand played her amazing. Talking about acting performances, Elizabeth Olsen won awards for this, and rightfully so. She was flawless. She was beautiful. Her acting was on point. She done sad perfect. She done excited perfect she done house everything she done was genuinely like it had been blessed vision paul bettany what an absolute king we all love paul bettany he's an absolute legend also in one division all off the westview residents were amazing phil my friend david langell shout out to you absolute legend i love him i keep in contact with him asif ali legend jolene purdy legend evan peters was one of the most enjoyable additions to the mcu too until yeah i'm still not over the ralph boner thing but anyway we'll move on from that i don't want to talk about it i cried so much at the end of this show it was just oh i was so emotional at the end i was so invested in their life and seeing them have to split up i cannot wait for the day they get reunited in the mcu the whole show was so poetic so beautiful, so artsy. I just thought it was unbelievable how well the show was crafted. The amount of detail that went into everything, every line was just, oh my god, it was just, I can't even describe it. I just loved it so much. On top of that, you can't even lie, it was pretty fun getting Jimmy Wood every single week. And the show brought us the bangers WandaVision. <laughs> You cannot lie if you didn't walk around humming that every single day the whole time WandaVision was on. And it also gave us Agatha all along. Who's been messing up everything? It's been Agatha all along. That's right, that was a certified summer banger. Even the other characters, I, I, there's so much to even talk about. White Vision was very interesting. Hayward was a cool villain. I hated him, but he was a cool villain. Darcy, everything about this show. Monica Rambeau, all of the characters were just very enjoyable. The only flaw I have with the show is the Ralph Bonner thing. I didn't like that, obviously, and that's why it's not perfect. I would score this show a very high 9.5 out of 10. I might get flamed for that in the comments, but that's the beauty of having different opinions. I like fantasy more than other stuff, and I stand by it. 9.5 out of 10, WandaVision was a banger. There you have it. That is my ranking of all five Disney Plus shows for Marvel that came out in 2021. Once again, this is my subjective personal ranking. It's not the correct answer. Let me know what you guys thought down below, if you agreed with me, if you disagreed, and what you would change. But apart from that, look out for the new videos I've got coming in the future. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you next time.